videos for inferences about means. Um, in this lesson, I'm going to uh, review the assumptions and conditions we need to check. Um, and then I'm going to leave the check your understanding problem and also the um, using a table to find t-values for you to try on your own um, as I will be reviewing that in the next and final video. So just a couple things to keep in mind for um, your assumptions and conditions. You obviously always wanna check that the data values are mutually independent. Um, the randomization condition always should um, be something you're paying attention to. You need to check the 10% condition. The nearly normal condition is um, new um, because you know in, for proportions we had success failure, but we don't have p hat or q hat here. So we need to check the nearly normal condition. Um, and one of the ways you can do this is by checking a histogram or a normal probability plot, which we talked about in uh, previous videos. Um, for small samples, like if the sample size is less than 30, the data should be unimodal and reasonably symmetric. Um, so that's something you wanna look for. When the sample size is larger than 30, the T methods are safe to use um, unless the data are extremely skewed. So it's always good to check either a histogram or a normal probability plot. So you can try the um, check your understanding there and you can also um, you know, practice finding the T values um, here, but if you're unsure of how to do those things, just stay tuned for the next video and in one of the problems um, or two of them, I will review how to do that. One of the things I wanna caution you though is be really careful when interpreting your confidence intervals. So here's a list of things that you shouldn't say. Um, for instance, um, in the problem that you are going to complete, so you can either pause the video now and complete it or you can try afterwards. Um, you don't wanna say 90% of all the college's students sleep between 6.272 and 7.008 hours per night. The confidence interval is about the mean amount of sleep. Don't say we are 90% confident that a randomly selected student will sleep between those hours per night. This false interpretation is also about individual students rather than about the mean. We're not looking at individuals, we're looking about at the mean, the average. Don't say the mean amount of students sleep is between 6.64 hours 90% of the time. That's not true. That's about means, but it's still wrong. It implies the true mean varies when in fact, it's the confidence interval that would have been different had we gotten a different sample. And we've discussed that. Um, that's all due to natural sampling variation. Finally, don't say 90% of all samples will have a mean of sleep between 6.272 and 7.008 hours per night. Um, there's no reason this interval boundary should become a special standard for other random samples. It's the population parameters that would dictate any such boundaries, um, but we can't know the values of those parameters without a census. So what you do wanna say is something like 90% of intervals that could be found in this way would cover the true value or make it more personal and contextual, kind of like what we do when we answer these questions. And we say something like, I am 90% confident that the true mean amount that students sleep is between 6.72 and 7.008 hours um, per night. Keep in mind that, you know, in context, you know, when you're talking about confidence intervals, we're just saying that in a random sample of the same size, um, about 90% of them would contain the true mean amount of sleep that um, these people are getting. Okay, that's it for this video. Please stay tuned for the last and final video where we're going to do a one sample t-test and I will also um, show you how to find the um, uh, sample size that you need to be within a certain margin of error.